Hey YouTube, it's Zoe, and today I have another book haul to share with all of you. I have been pretty good so far this year with buying books. I've gotten most of the books through the library, and I've been finding some budget books, and overall, not too shabby. But uh, it has been a couple of months, and I do have some books that I purchased that I need to share with all of you. So I'm not perfect, but I'm doing better, and that's all we can ask for. This video is a paid promotion with Disney Book Group. I am partnering with them for the release of The Lovely and the Lost by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is in stores now if you want to check it out. This is a mystery, and I was just talking the other day about how I want to read more mystery books. This is a YA mystery that centers around a family that raises search and rescue dogs. Our main character, Kira, was actually found lost in the woods by one of these search and rescue dogs and the trainer of the search and rescue dogs named Katie Bennett. She didn't know how long she was in the woods, how she even got there. She doesn't know anything about her backstory. So Katie Bennett adopts Kira and her Katie and Katie's son and Katie's teenage neighbor named Free, all of them are kind of working together to raise the dogs. One day, Katie's estranged father asks for Katie's help and the search and rescue dog's help to find a missing girl lost in the Sierra Glades National Park. Kira becomes obsessed trying to find the missing girl because it reminds her of her own past and so some of her memories are coming back and she's trying to find this new missing person who is one of several people who has gone missing in the National Park in the last year. So there's the police procedural part of it and also learning more about Kira's backstory and dogs. Haha! <laughs> so if you are a dog lover or a mystery lover or a survival story lover or if you just think it sounds cool be sure to check it out. It is currently in stores everywhere and thank you again to Disney Book Group for sponsoring this video. It really means a lot. The next book I have is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas who wrote The Hate You Give. I'm pretty sure you know who Angie Thomas is. This is about a teenage girl named Brie who lives in the same area as Star from The Hate You Give. They both lived in Garden Heights. So this takes place a few months or I think a year after the events of The Hate You Give, you can see how the community is still disturbed by what happened. A 16 year old named Brie wants to become the greatest rapper of all time. You can see where she gets her inspiration for her raps and I don't really listen to rap music but I was going online and searching up the different rappers, seeing who inspired her and influenced how she rapped. You can see the thought process of how Brie constructed her raps, trying to figure out what rhymed with what, some slant rhymes, all of that. It's, it's poetry, really. So it follows her rise to fame in a way, her gaining the confidence to go out and do her first rap battles, her trying to find somebody to manage her career, her making her first single, which lands her in some controversy. People almost deliberately misconstruing her words because she is a black teenager from Garden Heights. Brie and her family are also living in poverty. There's no food in their fridge and they're facing an eviction. So her dreams are not only to support herself, but to support her whole family. There are so many layers in this book. It's not just a rise to fame book, but it's showing how all of the odds are stacked against her, but she's still going after what she wants. This isn't a book review, but I read it and I liked it and you know, you should check it out. Now for another book that I've already read and really enjoyed, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, one of my new favorite contemporary or just authors in general amazing. This was actually our first bookmarked book of the month. We did an entire live show around this book. So if you've already read it or you want to know more about the book, I will leave that live show down below in the description. But anyway, this is a fake autobiography about a band named Daisy Jones and the Six that were very popular during the 1970s. I don't want to tell you too much about this because I really feel like it's a journey. And the entire book is kind of a mystery. You're wondering why at the height of their fame this band broke up. The biographer of this book is interviewing each member of the band as well as their close friends, family, and managers, other industry people, trying to see the situation from each of their sides. You can definitely tell that each 
member has a very biased point of view, but you can kind of see where all of their bias intersects, and that's what you assume is the truth. Because I love Taylor Jenkins Reid, I want to read every single book that she's ever written. So I purchased the two other books by her that I don't own yet. They are Forever Interrupted and One True Loves. These, I believe, were her first and second books? No. That's a lie. I just lied to you. It is actually the first and the fourth book that she published. This one came out right before The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Forever Interrupted follows a 20-something named Elsie Porter who lives in New York City. Elsie's just going about her life when all of a sudden she goes to get pizza and ends up bringing back a man. She falls in love getting pizza, the dream. Within a few weeks, they have fallen in love, and by May, they have eloped. But only nine days after they got married, Ben, the man that she fell in love with and got married to, has been hit by a truck and was killed. At the hospital, she finally meets her mother-in-law and they grieve over Ben's death together. It says that the story interweaves the falling in love and the grief, which sounds so heart-wrenching and I'm ready to cry. <laughs> I'm ready to get some pizza, bring back a man, and then cry. Now, One True Love is about a woman named Emma, and I think that she's written other books with main characters named Emma. Maybe it's just the fact that she uses very common names in her books and I think they all sound like Emma. Emma marries her high school sweetheart named Jessie. They have this adventurous life together. They travel the world, they live life to the fullest, and they don't conform to their parents' expectations. Jessie works on nature documentaries and is on assignment on islands in the Pacific called the Aleutian Islands, which I've never heard of before, but his helicopter goes missing on their first wedding anniversary. Emma thinks that he is gone forever. It has been a year. She's now in her 30s, she quit her job as a freelance writer, moved back home, runs into an old friend named Sam, they fall in love, they are now engaged. But guess what? Jessie's back, everybody! <laughs> so she has a husband and a fiance. She's also a changed person because she went through all of this distress, pieced her life back together. Who does she belong with? Where does her heart lie? We gotta read it to find out. Now, the next book. I have in this haul is the best book in this haul, possibly the best book of all time. You decide. It is Pawnee, The Greatest Town in America by Leslie Nope. If you know anything about me, you know that my favorite show of all time is Parks and Recreation. This is the book, the real book that Leslie Nope wrote. Um, where's the gotcha sticker? I need a nice big gotcha sticker from Joan Calamezzo. It's a fictional biography on the town of Pawnee, the small town in Indiana, and it's an actual book. Look at this! There are Ron Swanson, everybody, but actual words in here. Was that Ben Wyatt I saw? Yes, it was. It has fake interviews and so many pictures. There are fake ads in the back too. This is the best type of merchandise I can ever think of. Making fictional things become real. Watch this be on my favorite books of 2019 video, everybody. I want to know who actually wrote this. Whoever you are out there, know that I thank you for your service. The next book I have is a library book. It is My Brother's Husband, Volume 2 by Gengoro Tagame. This is a manga, which follows how homosexuality is accepted or not accepted in Japanese culture. So right here we have Yaichi, I believe. I'm really sorry if I'm butchering these names. I promise I did look them up. His identical twin brother named Ryoji was married to Mike right here. Mike Flanagan, he's a Canadian. Ryoji moved to Canada and fell in love with Mike. They got married there, but Mike has never met any of Ryoji's relatives. After Ryoji passed away, Mike is grieving. He goes to Japan and meets all of his relatives. Kana, who is Yaichi's young daughter, immediately accepts Mike and completely understands and accepts homosexuality, but Yaichi is not as accepting, chronicles how he confronts his own prejudices, and learns to be more accepting of all people. I really liked the first volume, I cried, and they are manga, so they're incredibly quick to read. The next book I have right here I purchased solely because Hannah from A Clockwork Reader, one of my best friends, told me to buy it. I have no idea what it's about. It is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. This is a fantasy book, and that's all I know.
Oh my gosh, there's time travel. Oh my gosh. Didn't even read the back before I bought it, but this actually sounds really good. This is set in modern day New York where magic is all but extinct. There are a few more magicians or magius. Magius? Sure. But they are forced to live in secret. There is this magical barrier around Manhattan called the Brink and anybody who passes through it or tries to get out of Manhattan loses all of their powers. There's this girl named Esta who is a time traveling thief. She's going around to different time periods and stealing different magical artifacts. And the last thing she needs to steal is a magical book from 1902, which contains all of the secrets of the order who created the brink. And when she can find those secrets, she can destroy the brink and everyone will be happy. Okay, this sounds good. I'm gonna check it out. <laughs> Well, I already bought it, so um, you would hope that I would check it out. Next, I have Rich People Problems by Kevin Kwan, the third and final book in the Crazy Rich Asians trilogy. I really enjoyed the first two. I enjoyed the first one more than the second one, but I heard that the finale is very satisfying, so I hope that is the case for me. The series is all about crazy rich Asians living in Singapore, Hong Kong, Shanghai, even America. We go to Paris and London all over the world. I love that the scope of the story is so broad. We really can see how everybody is connected. They went to the same school together or they have friends in common or family in common or they know somebody who knows somebody who knows them. It's an entire World Wide Web. Nicholas Young is also a solid love interest. I really like him. He has his flaws sometimes, but overall, quality dude. I like him. I also like Rachel Chu. I love Astrid. And there are a lot of well-written, terrible characters. It's kind of like Gossip Girl where everything is over the top and people are just spending money left and right, but that's half the charm. It's a satire. It's funny. It's very lighthearted if you want something to read at the beach or traveling the summer. Whatever you do in the summer, pick it up. Yay! <laughs> Also watch the movie, please. We then have King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo, the first book in a duology, a trilogy. Is it a standalone? I don't know. All I know is that it happens after Crooked Kingdom and I have not read that duology yet. So I'm not looking up what this book is about because I think anything will be a spoiler. I know that this follows a character who I have already met before. I've only read the Shadow and Bone trilogy so far. So I know he's still alive. He is the King of Scars, in case you're wondering. Yay! I went to the book signing of this with Hannah, Haley, Ashley, and Vanessa. We had a lot of fun, but um, I was spoiled for Six of Crows a little bit at the signing because obviously everybody who was there was a fan of Lee Bardugo and not a fake fan like me who had only read the first book at the time. And because I am an intellectual maven, I purchased two classic literature books. I'm intelligent just having these. Wow, that's how it works, right? Osmosis. These are both the Penguin cloth-bound hardback books. They're very pretty and they match the other books that I have, so that's why I purchased them. But I genuinely do want to read these. They're not just to have on my shelf. The first one I have is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. There is a man named Dorian Gray. He's real hot. He thinks he's real hot. He has a portrait painted of himself that he keeps in the attic and he continues to look hot, but the more bad things he does, his portrait starts to look like how his soul looks. Is that right? The other one I have here is Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. I watched the entirety of the Amazon Prime miniseries with Olivia Cook and I really enjoyed it. I thought the story was so entertaining, but I didn't realize it is so large and now I'm scared. I'm really scared. The font is very small and very close together and it is a, a hunk of a book. Am I ready for a hunk? <laughs> I don't think I am. I love Becky Sharp, our main character. She's kind of like Evelyn Hugo, except instead of rising in Hollywood, she's rising in English society social standing. She'll do whatever she needs to do to get ahead, to make a name for herself. She will do whatever she needs to do to drag herself out of the situation she was born into. Everything she does is calculated and I love reading about characters like that. I didn't realize there was such an interesting female character in classic literature, so I want to read it. 
but I think I need to give myself a pep talk before I pick it up. I call myself a reader, but am I? If I'm intimidated by this book, I don't know anymore. Leave your bets down below how long it will take me to finally pick up the book. If your guess is 20 years, I think you're correct. I have another book that I've already read and really enjoyed, so I love that for me. It is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson, the first book in the trilogy. I have the sequel right here, which is The Vanishing Stare. This is a murder mystery trilogy set at a boarding school in Vermont, an isolated boarding school that was built by an extravagant and kind of whimsical tycoon in the 1930s. He built secret tunnels everywhere, murder mystery house things, what did he expect was going to happen? I don't know. So in the 1930s, right after he built the school, Ellingham, the tycoon who built the school, his wife and daughter were kidnapped. And it was one of the greatest unsolved crimes in history. He gave a lot of money to the kidnappers, but they never sent back his wife and daughter. There was also someone else who was murdered in the school. You know how that happens. Flash forward to modern times, we have our main character named Stevie Bell, who is a true crime detective aficionado. She gets a spot into the boarding school, which is kind of a genius academy think tank for teenagers. And she is tasked with solving the Ellingham murder mystery kidnapping case. Things start happening again. I'm not going to spoil anything for you. It's a mystery. I read these and loved them. Why do my book hauls always turn into book reviews? Well, I guess I'm, I'm trying to get you to buy all these books, <laughs> or at least check them out from the library. Now we have a book that I am purchasing for the third time, The Diviners by Libba Bray. I previously had this pretty cover back when it was actually being published for the first time in like 2014 or something, but me being an idiot, I unhauled the book because I wasn't interested in reading it. I purchased it solely on how the cover looked, and then I heard from one person who didn't like it, so I thought, ah, I won't like it either. Like an idiot! Then last year, I read the first book and I loved it, but I had an ugly paperback version that was not nearly as pretty, so... Um, I, I purchased the pretty version again. I got it for $4 on thriftbooks.com. It was an old library copy, if you can see right there, the library sticker. I tried to Sharpie over it, but I did a very bad job. And there was also a protective coating around the cover that I tried to get off as much as I could. But now, ooh, look at that. Ooh. Now it's a unique copy. It's mine. Also, I love the fact that so many people read this before me. I know some people are kind of grossed out by library books, but I personally think it's really cool that I'm reading a book that other people have read. Except for the times that you sometimes find boogers in between the pages. Not as good. Now we just need to start a petition to get them to revert all of the series to these pretty covers instead of the ones we have now. Why? Why do you mess with perfection? Anyway, this is set in 1920s New York City. Kids are learning their own magical powers and ghosts. A lot of paranormal stuff is happening. The last book I have to share with you all is a library book. It is If I'm Being Honest by Emily Wibberly and Austin Siegman Broca. This just came out a couple of days ago, last week, I believe. So my library is on top of it. I already have it in my hand and it's never been read before. I feel so fancy. This is a YA contemporary retelling of The Taming of the Shrew by William Shakespeare. If you've seen 10 Things I Hate About You, one of the best movies of all time, that's also a modern day YA retelling of The Taming of the Shrew. So I'm expecting it to have similar vibes. I hope so. This is about a girl named Cameron who is the mean girl at her school. She doesn't necessarily think that she's being mean or cruel. She just thinks that she's telling it like it is and being upfront and honest. But uh, guess what? That's mean sometimes. Cameron has a crush on this boy named Andrew who doesn't think that her cruelty is cute. So to win Andrew's heart, she is going to tame herself like Catherine in Taming of the Shrew. And she goes around on an apology tour trying to become a nice person. I think this sounds like a lot of fun. I love Shakespeare retellings, not necessarily Romeo and Juliet. That's kind of played out, but like Taming of the Shrew and Twelfth Night. Yes, give me She's Man. Give me 10 Things I Hate About You. I think this is going to be a perfect book for summer. I love contemporaries in summer. I love contemporaries all year round. Never mind. I take back what I said. So those are all of the books that I have acquired over the past couple of months. I've gotten a lot more from the library, but those are all of the library books I have currently on my shelf. Thank you so much for watching this book haul slash 
review video. We know that's how it turns out every single time. Please let me know down below which book do you think I should pick up first. Also, have you read any of these books before? Have you read any of the books that I've read? in my haul. Are you going to read Pawnee, The Greatest Town in America with me? I hope so. Please. <laughs> and I'll talk to you all soon in my next video. Bye!